It is mostly used for junior, but sometimes can be used for mid-level positions. A lot of times you will get it as the part of the coding challenge of the interview process through HackerRank, LeetCode, or any other coding challenges platforms. Even though this is not a senior level coding challenge, you can still solve it in multiple ways and show your level of seniority. Today I'm going to show you two ways how to solve this problem. How I did it when I was junior engineer back in 2014 and how I would do it now. So if you guys are interested to see how the junior and the senior software engineers would do it, stick with me until the end. Now let's write a code. So I'm going to use VS Code, as you can see, as a code editor, and I will use JavaScript as a programming language. By the way, both of them are the most popular tools in the world in their own sphere. Hey, 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 did you hit that like button already? If you did not, please hit the like button below, subscribe to our channel, and also don't forget to subscribe to our Instagram and the Telegram communities where we share many more updates than on YouTube. Let's continue. So if you're not familiar with the FizzBuzz, FizzBuzz states that we need to print number one, hundreds from one to hundred, uh, sorry, numbers from one to hundred. Number two, all of the numbers, there are multiple of three, should print Fizz instead of the number. And you can see right here, one, two, and then three, we print Fizz. Then all of the multiples of five should print Buzz. So one, two, Fizz, four, Buzz. And then six will be Fizz because Fizz is the multiple of three, as you can see right here. And then same applies to nine uh, for Fizz because it's multiple of three, Buzz multiple of five, so, so it is uh, applied for 10. And then if both of them are applicable for numbers, which are multiples of both three and five, we will print FizzBuzz, which is a number 15. And then same thing applies afterwards. We will have, we'll have six, uh, let's see, number 12, 15, then 18 will be Fizz, 20 will be Buzz, number 30 will be FizzBuzz. So how do we solve this problem? So fir first of all, let's follow our requirements. We need to print all the numbers from one to 100. Let's use a for loop to, to print out from one to 100. And in JavaScript and VS Code, it's very simple. You type in word for, and it will give you an option to autofill. This comes from VS Code. I'm going to choose for loop right here. Great, it did autofill it. And by default, you can see that we are using word index for an, in, uh, for an actual index, but I will replace it with i because it is much easier and everyone, most of the people in the world get used to use i instead of the full word index. It's just a shortcut. Okay, I'm going to remove this code right here because we do not need it. And also, if you pay attention, when we are using autofill from VS Code, by default, it tells us that i is less than array.length, which means we are looping through some length, some array but we are not, so we have a requirement right here which specifies that we need to th loop through uh, from 1 to 100. So I will add console log. I just type in log, it gives me an out of fill option. I'm going to hit enter and I will type in i. So now we're going to output everything from 0 to 100. Actually, we need to output everything from 1 to 100, so let's put it there. Now let's run our code. We're gonna type in fizz, uh, we're gonna type in node, then fi, hit tab to autofill it, and hit enter. Awesome, that's what we wanted, but the thing is, we have outputted everything from one to 99, and that's not what we wanted. We need 100, so let's add it there. Okay, now it's 100, great. Now let's move forward. So the next step would be to print out word fizz for all the multiples of three instead of the number. And how do we do that? Well, we need to use if statement, if, but then there is a question, how do we know if it's three, and then that's six, there is six, there is nine. We could hard code it, we, we could say if it's three, six, nine, but that's not the case. We can, we, we're gonna get tired of hard coding things until 100, or what if we need to loop through more? So that, that's not gonna work. And there is something in JavaScript called a remainder, and we can use it right here by saying if i a remainder of three equals to zero and in human words when we uh, remainder 
op operator will help us to get the remainder or the leftover. For example, if we say 7 remainder of 3, it will result into 1. Uh, because 3 multiply, uh, so 3 multiply by 2 will be 6, and then we take 6 out of 7, and it is 1. So if we say, what is the remainder of, uh, I mean, 9 remainder of 3, that will equal to 0. So that's exactly how we're going to use it here. So first, it's going to be 1. Is 1 remainder of 3 equal to 0? No, that's not the case. It is 2 remainder of 3. No, that's not the case. Is 3 remainder of 3? Yes. So we're going to print out this. So let's add it here. Log. Print out this. Okay. Now let's move forward. We have a next requirement, which is 5. So for multiples of 5, print 5, print bus. So we're going to copy paste it. Put a 5 here. And say bus. So now we're going to print out fizz, buzz, fizz. Oh, let's actually check it out. Let's run the code. Uh-oh, it's only fizz buzz. I think we're missing something. Yes, and then if none of these work, we need to say else. We're gonna we're going to output i right here and let me click on terminal, arrow up to see the latest command that I ran. Now with this buzz. All right, let's see. What are we getting as an output right here? So we're getting one, two, fizz, buzz. We're still getting three. Interesting. Why? Oh, I see. Because we have if statement, uh, and then we have another if, and then we have else. So these should be all connected, and we can do that by putting all of the outputs in a curly braces, then changing if to else if. Then let me move this also into, into the curly braces. And let's beautify the code by pressing option shift F keys. Okay, now when we're gonna run the code, it should pass. So let's run it again. Let's scroll all the way up. 1, 2, fizz, 4, buzz, fizz, 7, 8, fizz, buzz, perfect. That's what we wanted. And now we need to only solve the last, I mean, write a code for the last requirement, which is for numbers, which are multiples of 3 and 5, we need to print fizz, buzz. So that should be fairly easy, right? Okay, let's add another else if statement right here. Uh, else if, we're going to type and here, as you can guess, we need to use both of these. So let's copy first one and say, and by the way, I'm not using or right here as I could use. I'm using and for remain, remainder of three and remainder of five. So both of these are applicable in this last statement. And then we're going to have to put a curly braces and say console log fizz buzz. Just like the ask us right here, right? Okay, let's run the code and see if it's going to work. Let's scroll all the way up. Fizz buzz, fizz buzz, number 15 is fizz. Hmm, guess why? Well, that's because we have a remainder of three is the first conditional statement. We have it not as the second, but the first one. So that's why when we are getting to 15, it checks if it's a remainder of 3. And yes, that is true. So we're going to print fizz and not get any other conditional statements executed. So we need to fix that by moving this one all the way up. So this should be our first statement. And this, so then 3 will be the next one. 5 would be the next one, and only then, if, if we don't have to print out fizz buzz, neither fizz, neither buzz, then we can print out number. So let's run the code, and now it should work. Scrolling all the way up. Okay, fizz, buzz, fizz, buzz, fizz, and fizz buzz for 15, awesome. How about a 30? Fizz buzz, awesome. So all of the divisible ones, all of the remainders of 3 are printing fizz, all the remainders of 5 are printing buzz, remainders of 3 and 5 are printing fizz buzz. 
By the way, Remainder is called Modulo in a different languages, such as Python and Perl, if I'm not mistaken. So if you had experience with those, you might know that already. Awesome. Now let's move forward. Let's clear our terminal, move forward and find out how can we write this, how can we solve this problem in a bit more mature way. And the more mature way would be writing a little bit less code because that's a lot of code. So let's let's comment out this code and see how can we get it done in a different way. So the different way would be to have only two if statements and they would be the same as we had them before at the beginning, but there will be a little bit of difference. So we're going to have two of these uh, and then we can build a string. We don't have we don't have to simply output the string fizz or buzz. We can build it. So let's say uh, let result equal to an empty string. So we're going to have an empty string. And then if our i is a remainder of three, then we can say a result plus equals to i. Actually, fizz. Yeah, fizz. There we go. So if if the remainder of three is zero, then we're going to concatenate an empty string with a fizz. Pretty much we're setting result equal to fizz. And then in the other case, when we have a remainder of five that equals to zero, we're going to concatenate it with buzz. And you might ask, why do I have to concatenate it? Well, we could simply replace result with a fizz or buzz, but then What's going to happen if, if it's a 15, then we're going to, number one, we're going to put a fizz here. This conditional statement will pass and this one will also pass. So we're going to, on the top of the fizz, we're going to add buzz. And then we're going to have both of them, such as fizz buzz. And that will satisfy this requirement right here. But then the question is, how do we print either a number or a string? Well, we have just answered our own question we can print a number. So number one, we check if it's not an empty string. We can simply use OR operator. So result OR I. And now we'll print either a result if it's not empty or I, which will never be empty. So let's run it one more time. And boom we did, let's see, we did solve our problem one more time in a more experienced way or more efficient way. So let's see, three, fizz, five, buzz, six, fizz, 15, fizz, buzz, 30, fizz, buzz. And then one more time, look at it, look at it, how much code we had here and how much code we have here. This looks much more professional, uh, but at the beginning of your career, you might not completely understand it because we are concatenating multiple strings into one and then we're using OR operator. But it's very simple. If we did use one of the, uh, we did concatenate either fizz or buzz, then we're going to output it and not letter and not variable i, which will be an index. But if we did not do any of the concatenations, then we're going to print out i. And that's how exactly we can solve this algorithm challenge in a much more mature way, the way I would do it right now. Even though I'm very social, you guys can see that I like to dig into code a lot. I like to improve things, I like to make things better, faster and more efficient in a world of coding. And it seems like the same patterns apply not only to coding. If you become really good at coding, you'll become really good at everything. You will become good at business because in coding we're using patterns to make code efficient, to make to organize it in a better way, to make it scalable. Same things apply to business. We just have a different patterns. Let me know what you guys think about it and leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time.